Hello, my name is Ilona and this is another video in my series Shadow Work and I want to talk about pitfalls. Uh, certain things I've mentioned a few of them in other videos but I do think sometimes it is important to uh, repeat certain things. And uh, first I want to start with being too positive or just focusing on the positive. Of course it's a good thing to focus on positive things but I was actually talking to someone, I do personal readings and she explained to me that if she feels sad or angry, she tries to bend it to something positive. And that sounds very exhausting to me. I explained to her, just imagine a child, very angry, and then you say to the child, and now you have to change it into something positive. What do you think is going to happen? The child won't understand because that's not what the child is feeling. And that's the same with emotions. If you do not just feel the emotion, the anger, the fear, the pain, but trying to change it into something else, you're not going to transform it. You're not going to feel it completely. And this is of course my personal experience. I was quite aware for a long time, all the things that I've experienced. I was aware of where it came from, uh, the patterns, but I couldn't change it. So usually afterwards I was like, yeah, well, this happened because uh, this and this happened. And uh, this is the pattern from my youth, but I couldn't change it at the moment. It was almost like I was just following a certain pattern again. I was stuck in the pattern. And then I realized I still hadn't changed the emotions, the feelings. So I was acting from that emotion, from feeling that which put the pattern in motion. So if you want to change patterns, you have to look at the emotions behind this as well. Emotions, feelings, they want to be felt. So anger, you don't have to push that aside. You shouldn't avoid it. You can just embrace it. You don't have to act on it. When I'm talking about feeling through your feelings and emotions, I'm talking about embracing it. Usually uh, take some time, make sure that you cannot be interrupted and just see where it feels in your body. If you feel angry, if you feel uh, sad, fear, where do you feel that in your body and just breathe through it, feel it. You do not have to wallow in it. You don't have to act on it. Sometimes with anger, it's, it's, it's all right if you just want to scream or, but be by yourself, do it in your own time. Don't throw it at someone else. So you can really feel through it and see what's really behind it. Usually with a lot of anger, that's a sign that certain boundaries have been crossed and you didn't put up your boundaries well enough. It can also mean that uh, you were just mistreated in a way. And then it's important to look at what am I feeling? What is this anger? Can I transform it? Is it something from my youth? You don't even have to think about that all the time. You can just use what's happening now. Just if you're triggered, feel it. Just feel it. Feel through it. Usually you have to sometimes wait. If there's a, sometimes a situation where you're like in the supermarket or uh, talking to someone else, of course you can immediately just let everything stop and then feel. But then you, of course, can wait till you get back home and take some time for yourself and just feel through it or write things down that can help as well. But it's about really, truly feeling it and feelings and emotions are uh, in a way it's about surrendering and that can be very frightening. Most of us haven't learned how to deal with that and I'm, I'm working through it. I'm getting better and better at it. But I've also noticed that deeper emotions and feelings coming up right now, especially with the energies, then it's really about healing ourselves. So first, you do not have to be only positive. If you feel anger, uh, frustration, feel, feel it. Just embrace it. You don't have to do anything. Just embrace it and feel through it. You don't have to act on it. You don't have to avoid it. You don't have to push it away feel it. So that's number one. The second is being too understanding, especially when you're very sensitive. You understand why people act the way they do towards you. You probably understand their youth, how they were brought up, and especially when you're in a relationship and that person just doesn't really, uh, how do you say this, 
a lot of sensitive people do have a tendency, especially if they're not very good at putting up boundaries, to attract partners that will just step over them, step over their boundaries, do not, um, how do you say this, really think about what's necessary for them. So it can be very like a power dynamic that the sensitive person adapts to the other partner. And it's very important to understand that it's great that you understand that person, but if that person or your partner doesn't change their behavior, because that's what you're dealing with, you're dealing with their behavior, then you really have to draw your conclusions from that. You have every right to protect yourself. You have every right to put your boundaries up. You have every right to be respected. If a person doesn't even need, uh, have to be a partner or even a family member or a colleague or a friend or doesn't respect you, you have every right to say something about that. And also, of course, give the opportunity to the other person to change their ways or change the way they act. And then you can decide if it doesn't happen, like if it happens, that of course is great. But if it doesn't happen, if you want to put up with behavior or not, that is your choice. But you have to understand that you have to make that choice. Some people do not want to change. They just remain in their bubble and do not change their behavior, which means you'll be stuck with that for whatever length of time you want to remain with these persons or this, this person or this partner. So you will have to decide if you want to put up with it or not. That is a choice you can make yourself and you have to make yourself, obviously. But it's very important, especially with understanding, just too much understanding that it's something I've know this from my own past, that I would tolerate or um, accepted certain behavior that just wasn't good for me. It's very important not to do that anymore. Or if you are uh, accepting that, then you of course have to accept the consequences as well. And how you deal with it, that is of course up to you. So that's number two, two being too understanding. Three is the, um, we are, and this is more about what's going on in the world right now and what's been going on, of course, with the white hats, the black hats, this is a spiritual war. This is war about our energy, about our soul, about using our energy. And for a lot of people, that's a bit strange to realize. Most, most people really think that we are just a body. This is it, because that's of course how we were programmed, how the dark energies wanted to program us, because they want to keep us at a certain energy, certain level, so they can control us, manipulate us, and use our energy energy so that's very important they want to use our energy and a lot of people don't fully understand that it's more of a feeling i have but they try to keep us fearful so all that fear generates a certain vibration just like anger generates a lot of vibration just be around a lot of angry people you can just feel it in the the atmosphere around it it is very almost electric. It's almost like something can happen. It's like cutting like a knife. This, this, you can just feel it. And that's energy. And they know how to take that energy and use it to further their agenda. They're also using these energies. We manifest. We do that at a conscious level or unconscious level. It doesn't matter. We manifest. We are creative beings. So they program us in a certain way. So we think a certain way and that is also creating timelines. They want to keep us as fearful as possible. So they create all these events that are very traumatic. They make sure false flags happen. So people are in fearful situation. They make sure uh, things are happening with the financial, um, you know, everything financial that's been happening, the, uh, the crashes to keep people in a certain mindset. So people will think that way. They will think in a very victimhood, like they can't, have, they can't do something about that. We are not capable of changing things. If you just look at TV series, movies, a lot of detectives, I've watched a lot of detectives myself, and there was always, even if the detectives got the, the bad guy, but there was always this, this underlying theme that they cannot get everyone. 
Some people are just too powerful, nothing you can do about it, especially the British detectives, by the way. There was always someone higher up that was messing things up and there was nothing they could do about it. Though There was always this a bit uh, feeling of defeat. Like, well, you can change certain things, but you cannot change everything. And that's what they programmed us. So it's very important to understand that where we focus on, uh, on the vibration where we, uh, of course, uh, because of the emotions and feelings, where I understand that, of course, I was just mentioning, don't be too positive, but that is like, if you don't deal with your fear, your anger, that is in your energy anyway, that's why you get triggered, you're going to manifest that and you're going to be manipulated. They will do things that will create fear within you because you still carry fear within you. That's why it's so important to embrace that fear, embrace that anger so you can just feel through it so they cannot manipulate you anymore at that level. That's why it's so important to become more and more neutral. More and more, if you transform your pain, your anger, your fear, you become neutral to what is going on around you. You can just look at it from a different perspective. You, can, you do not have to get caught in with it. So you do not get dragged along with it. That's why it's important to focus what's going on around you. You can focus also on gratitude. Of course, beside the fact that you embrace everything that comes up inside of yourself, you can focus on what makes you feel good. I actually mentioned that in, uh, I think my video from Monday, and I got a few reactions. How can you feel, you know, try to focus on good things or enjoy yourself when everything is falling apart? Because I'm working on my energy. This is a spiritual war. They want my energy at the lowest level possible. They want me as fearful, as angry, as frustrated as possible. Because that's what they work with. They want me to start manifesting that. Because the more frustrated and angry I am, and I'm not dealing with it, the more situation I will create, which are going to make me angry and frustrated. That's exactly what they want. They live off that energy. They like the lower energies, but they also want to keep us in that lower level in being like we're feeling like we're a victim. If you're frustrated, you feel like a victim. You feel powerless. You can't do anything about it. It's exactly what they want. So you keep manifesting situations where you don't have the power. That's how it works. And that's what they want. That's why they want to keep us in this situation and as uh, powerless as possible. So that's why it's very important that you keep your energy as high as possible. That's why I emphasize it. Be grateful because that's a very high vibration. Look at what you have. Enjoy the things that you have because then your vibration will be higher. They won't be able to feed off of you. I think that's very important. And the more you're in connection with your vibration, the stronger you'll get and the less they'll be able to manipulate you. You'll start manifesting more situations to be grateful for. You start manifesting more situations you can enjoy. That's how it works. That's also very important. That's the fourth thing I want to mention. That is be realistic. And then I'm always a bit confused. What is realistic really? Because I used to be very realistic when I was a lot younger. And it usually meant that I was very sarcastic and I've seen that, been there and don't trust anybody. Be realistic. Everyone will take advantage of you if you're not realistic. Don't be naive. Really, that's a very negative way of looking at things. Being realistic is looking at what is now, what is going on in your life now, embracing it, completely uh, accept the feelings that come up, the emotions, and then focus on what you want to focus on because that will be manifested. So when you're being realistic, look at what you really mean by that. Realistic is really what is reality. If we manifest our reality, pretty much anything is possible. It will depend on what we're going to manifest. How we, um, they say this, what we focus on 
So we can create whatever we want. We can create an incredible, beautiful world, but that is dependent on how we feel and what we manifest, what we believe. And when I'm talking about belief, I'm really talking about what we, like a deep knowing, a really deep knowing of what can happen and what is possible. We are limited by just our own way of thinking. If we believe that things cannot happen this way and this beautiful new world can never happen, that's just not possible. And look at everything that's going on around us and just focus outside of ourselves. Yes, then we fall in line with what the dark energies want. They want us to look at it like, well, this is impossible. They want us to feel that feeling of we're, we're defeated. There is no way we can step out of this. There's no way we have that power or that we can change it into something beautiful or wonderful. That is just out of our reach. If that is the way you think and feel very important, then that's what you're going to manifest. So be very aware of what you really going on. Are you capable of just opening yourself up, up and really believe that everything is possible? Really know that everything is possible? That's really something interesting to look at because that will be your reality. And last, I want to finish with very important, I've noticed that myself, is to ground yourself. And that is I've, most of my life I've spent in my mind. I was trying to control everything. And then I started feeling my, uh, you know, connecting with my emotions. But I also noticed that you can kind of get away with that as well. How you say, kind of ca get carried away with your emotions as well. So it's very important to understand that you're like a complete uh, being. So it's your mind, it's your heart, and it's your body. You have to connect everything. We are a spiritual being in having a human experience, but we have to understand we are also in a body. We have to ground ourselves. If we can ground ourselves, and you can just do that by being aware of your body, connect with your feelings, but also with your mind. We have to create this balance between everything so we can really connect with our intuition. But by... If you really want to connect with your intuition, it's very important to connect with your body because your body can tell you a lot of things. In your cells, there are all these memories and we have so much access if we really, really open ourselves to what our body is saying, what our cells are saying, connecting inside of ourselves with our intuition, with God. There is so much wisdom we can find inside of ourselves. And by grounding ourselves, we can start manifesting it. We can start really connecting with our intuition and follow our inner compass. Because that's the most important thing now to, to you know, how to say, be discerned in that. Use your discernment. What is true for you? Work with that. If something doesn't feel right, then leave it for what it is. You don't have to put any labels on it. Just say, okay, this, this person or this book or what I'm watching right now is, is not for me. That's fine. You can just move on to something else. But it's very important that we ground ourselves. We use our discernment and that we really start manifesting what we want in this world. I'd like to leave it at this and I hope to see you in another video. Bye.